we got the creeper out and we are back to work on blue steel the old high mileage 320,000 mile third gen ram common rail diesel welcome back everybody david shepherd here on the humble hotshot channel and today kind of left you on a cliffhanger with the last video not sure if it was a flex plate or not but today we're actually tearing into this truck pulling the transmission getting it out of the way truly inspecting that flywheel or flex plate rather and uh, seeing if that's the cause of our engine shake engine noise we've been experiencing with this truck so i'm actually going to take you guys step for step um or step by step rather through the transmission removal process for an automatic transmission four-wheel drive truck and um, we're going to get right into that right after word of scripture as always so today i want to share romans 8 26 which says likewise the spirit helps us in our weakness for we do not know how to pray as we ought, but the Spirit intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. So, super encouraging verse to me. Hope it is to you guys as well. Just that sometimes I don't even know what to pray for. I don't even know the right path. If I should fix this truck, you know, explore other options, pull this transmission when it could be the engine. Sometimes we don't even know which way to go or even what to pray for and ask for. But praise God, His Holy Spirit intercedes for us. He knows our heart. He knows our thoughts and uh, relates that to the Father. So thanks for listening, guys. Now I will show you what we got going on with the third gen. Pretty simple, but remove our battery posts first, both ground cables. Pull those out of the way. Just a good idea. Anytime you're working on anything, there's a little bit of electrical to be had with this one. And then we went ahead and started the first step here, which was to remove the rear drive shaft. Got that out of the way. We do have a one piece aluminum drive shaft on this truck. So pretty simple, no carrier bearing, just the four bolts out the back. And then that'll slide, that snout will slide out of the transfer case in the, in the case of four wheel drive. So first step done, we're gonna attack the front drive shaft now. And now, so I apologize. I did not catch everything step-by-step step on video because we had crazy winds here the last couple days in Colorado and there's trees down, fences down and it just made this job site a bear to even work in with dust flowing everywhere transmission fluid blowing on us um, but praise god we did get the job done we did just basically slide the transmission back and be able to inspect the fly or sorry flex plate if i call it a flywheel one more time inspect the flex plate all the way through all the way around all the way into the crankshaft bolts where it attaches and unfortunately that is not the issue with this truck the flex plate is fully intact it looks fine i took pictures of it and we in fact already started reinstalling the transmission so i'm going to show you guys well everything's fresh in my head exactly what you have to do again we did not disconnect everything on this truck only because um we just had to slide that transmission back far enough to inspect the flex plate and not truly drop it out of the truck so we did keep it intact with the transfer case and we also just didn't have to do undo all of the electrical connections those had enough slack if you take off some of the bracketry and also left some of the shifter cables tv cable and stuff had enough slack to move the trans transmission transfer case back a few inches so cut a couple corners there but otherwise we got all of the bell housing bolts all the torque converter bolts of course uh the shifter linkage for the transfer case both front and rear drive shafts were disconnected at one end and then also the transmission lines from the tranny cooler disconnected both of those again just on the transmission end and then bungeed them out of the way enough to move the tranny back didn't take those off the truck completely either but i'm gonna get there under the creeper give you guys the best look i can and um, show you exactly what you have to do to get a transmission transfer case out of a dodge cummins this one's automatic and four-wheel drive but the process is pretty similar one more thing to know is we did remove the entire cross member there under the you can see the transmission mount there and then this cross member that goes across the frame rails we removed that skid plate and cross member and people say you need a port of power or some kind of a lot of instruction manuals to remove this transmission people say that you need to get some kind of port of power device to spread the frame rails and get that out we've done it twice now where we just disconnect one end Get right in here with a pry bar without doing damage just gently get that out and drop one end of this cross member and then you could wiggle the other one free without spreading the frame rails or doing any kind of damage so that's what we did there we've got the inspection cover off of course this is how we rotated just with a pry bar in here rotated the 
flex plate torque converter, all that to get the torque converter bolts, but you tighten an access right through that hole. So fairly easy to get a 5 8 and even a torque wrench up in there. Drive shafts, self-explanatory, of course. And then again, we also left the starter on the truck. You don't actually have to remove the starter to do a clutch on a manual or to get an automatic off. So starter stays there. You just get all the bolts that actually hold the bell housing to the adapter plate on the engine. So these here are the transmission lines, compression fitting, where you actually hold this collar and back the fitting out um, with a wrench there on the transmission end. And then there's, you know, obviously one's feed, one's return. Here's the other one up in here. Again, we just took those off the transmission, moved them over to the side, out of the way. This drive shaft was dropped and um, we're able to move the transmission as much as we needed to for this job. So same thing, this exhaust bracket shares some bell housing bolts and also the transmission dipstick tube. That's the only thing that made a little bit of a mess, but hey, not too big of a deal. So we are torquing our torque converter bolts and also have the rear drive shaft to reinstall. But otherwise we are pretty much there um, with reinstalling this transmission. And I know that we were kind of halfway there with getting the engine out, not even halfway, but we would have had those back bolts off, but we decided to, um, go ahead and reinstall the transmission so we could at least move this truck out of here, get it back under its own power, and see if we can't diagnose this issue further. So, praise God, thanks for watching guys, and uh, I'll see you on the next one.